with 22 victories, no defeats, 12 knockouts. The number two heavyweight contender in the world, weighing 216 and a quarter pounds from Akron, Ohio, the rubber city, Michael Dynamite Stokes. Stokes. All right, Michael Dokes goes over to go eye to eye, face to face with George Chaplin, dressed for the occasion in baby blue. Dokes, number two, ranked at 216 and a quarter, like his opponent. They have never met before as we look at the tail of the tape. Dokes, uh, 23, Chaplin, 30. Same weight. You see Dokes has a three-inch pull in the height. He has a three-inch reach advantage. Chaplin is a 29, 30-year-old from Baltimore, Maryland, who is fighting in Pittsburgh for the first time. Now he has four losses and two draws. He has scored only eight knockouts as we get a close-up of Michael Dokes, a tremendous athlete, especially at South High School in Akron, Ohio. There's the face of Chaplin. Scheduled to go 10 rounds, five-point Pennsylvania must scoring system by the two judges and the referee. The two judges, a lady, Carol Polis is one, John Stewart the other, the referee in the ring, Frank Cappuccino from Philadelphia. 216 and a quarter. And now here in the corner of Michael Dokes, we've just been sprayed by the water that is uh, refreshing to the fighter, I'm sure. And they're going to come out here when we hear the bell for the first round. Dokes, 22 wins in 23 fights. He has one draw, and it was against Oswaldo Ocasio, which he reversed. And look at the speed of this Akron, Ohio heavyweight hands. Now he has set himself up in the last few fights to be the puncher instead of being up on the toes and moving around the ring. In the past, Chaplin in the blue trunks on the right has shown that he can take a fair punch. Dokes has truly never been tested as to uh, his ability to take a punch. Tonight may not be the time because Chaplin is not a heavy hitter. All right, get out, fellas. Come on. You hear the referee talking to them, just a little slap, and it gets them out of the clinch. You can see the difference in size and the height. Six-foot Chaplin on the right, Dokes on the left at six feet three inches. Many think that he is a blown-up light heavyweight. I do not agree with that opinion because he weighs more than the heavyweight champion of the world who will be going next against Snipes. And he is on a 216 uh, quarter pounds on a six-foot three-inch frame. Number two ranked and hoping to move up. And after landing a good punch, Chaplin was down on one knee, but the referee did not see it as a knockdown. He was stunned. We're in the first round with about a minute and a half to go of the first. But you'll find Chaplin is more than willing. And a tiny mouse under the left eye of Chaplin now from Baltimore. Three fine performances uh, against Cobb, a ten-round decision, and a three-round knockout of Gardner, and then a one-round knockout of Harry Terrell in Cleveland, Ohio, August 6th. Being very careful now is Chaplin on the right. Well, he should be. Wasn't that a quick left hook? Partially caught by the gloves of Chaplin. And Chaplin now starting to find the range with his left, both a jab and a hook. Three knockdown rule is in effect. Mandatory eight count, no standing eight. Cannot be saved for the bell except the last round of this 10 round bout. Heavyweight championship defense, the 11th by Larry Holmes of Eastern Pennsylvania coming up. Great, both of you, get out. Come on, step back. Bell, bell. Michael Dokes, the number two contender, had Chaplin in trouble. There you see the knees buckled. The referee did not see it as anything other than the knees buckling. So as we go into round two now, that is Michael Dokes of Akron, Ohio, on the right at 216 and a quarter, like his opponent from Baltimore, 30-year-old 
George Chaplin, who now tries to George use a little Whitman. movement with his head and, and his hands to keep Dokes off balance, okay. and he did with that left jab. That would be his best weapon here to keep Dokes off balance and not have the opportunity to land those fast combinations, especially the left hooks. And Chaplin with a good punch to the chin of Dokes. We're in the second round. Dokes with his back to us with the red stripe on those white trunks. A lot of all-around skills. He has great ability to change strategy during a fight. And remember, he has just turned 23 years of age and has a long way to go. But he has a timetable toward a title shot. And he'd love it against Larry Holmes, who tonight, following this bout, will be going against Ronaldo Sipes, the 25-year-old challenger. Holmes in at 213 and a half. Sipes, 215 and three quarters. That'll be the championship fight live here on ABC as we speak to you from Civic Arena in Pittsburgh. A big crowd watching. About a minute and a half, round two. Very, very good right-hand lead by Dokes. Just short, but scoring nonetheless. See some blood now. Perhaps Dokes has a nosebleed. Yes, he does. Michael Dokes on the far side with a nosebleed. Bill Prezant, Bobby Lewis will be working on that when this round ends, as it will in just about a minute. start fighting until he was 24 years old, a graduate of Morgan State, playing football there one year. He's an orthopedic technician at Lutheran Hospital in Baltimore. Beautiful jabs, and he tried to get across the one-two. Right hand uh, just short. Rest in 20 seconds. Walked right into a sharp uppercut. Chaplin did. Into the third round, Civic Arena, Pittsburgh. Michael Dokes with his back to us as the number two ranked heavyweight. And earlier we had an opportunity to visit with Michael and talk to him about his strategy in fighting Chaplin from Baltimore. Here's what he said. Well, at this point, uh, I think I'm going to stay stationary, uh, uh, make him move backwards. Uh, I think he's ineffective when he's going backwards. I think he's effective when he's coming forward and being the aggressor. So uh, my plan is to take all of that away from him, make him fight from the center of the ring, uh, uh, see how much he knows when he has a stationary target. My upper body movement is good, so there's no need for me to be mobile or use lateral movement against him. I have the height against him, so therefore I'm just going to stay there and make him fight. The voice of Michael Dokes, who throws the fast punches and is very much in a stationary punching position now against Chaplin. Earlier in the first round, he did have Chaplin moving backwards and tagged him, which buckled Chaplin's knees. Neither fighter officially knocked down. Nosebleed stopped by Bill Prezant, the cut man, in Dokes' corner. Look at that movement by Chaplin. Great, great. Step back. Come on, Frank Cappuccino of Philadelphia is the referee. And Dokes now uh, usually keeps his chin a little lower. He's got a little bit too high. And his hands are a little bit low, but makes up for it with that speed. Good left hook. The heavyweight contender who was for a long time a fancy Dan. Okay, step back. Great. Great. A showboater. Good, Michael good. Dokes. Now you surprised. Now you surprised. Those are heavy punches by Dokes. And those jabs are effective. 
Kaplan did the same thing against Greg Page recently at Atlantic City. A fight recovered. But lost the decision. 12 rounds to Page. Second time. In the light, Purdue Trunks. George Kaplan of Baltimore with a good left hook. Dokes felt it and was knocked off balance. Kaplan beginning to widen the distance between his two gloves. Could be dangerous. Preceding the home Snipes heavyweight championship bout, we have these two fine heavyweights scheduled for 10 now in the fourth round. Michael Dokes with a fast left jab and a good hitter now going against George Chaplin, who earlier told me his strategy against Dokes. I train for all of my fights the same way. Uh, I try to box a little, I try to slug a little. I work on the inside some and also on the outside. I try to be well-rounded. So uh, uh, basically, I, I didn't do anything different for him. All right, and that's the man in the light blue trunks on the left, moving those hands and upper body, trying to stay out of range. And incidentally, Bobby Lewis, Dokes' trainer between rounds, told Michael that he was just a half a step out of range. That's why he was missing, he felt, some of the punches. The wide stance now of, of Dokes. Chaplin loves to be inside. to alert our local stations as we speak to you from Pittsburgh that at the end of this round we'll be taking a station break while the fighters rest for a minute. Now Chaplin a little bit of a fancy Dan widening those dukes. Can do it against Dokes who has cat-like moves with both hands. Dokes has scored 12 knockouts in his 22 victories. Chaplin with eight knockouts and 16 wins. <laughs> Scoring the fight, five point much here in Pennsylvania, two judges and the referee. Through three, I have Dokes ahead in this bout, scheduled for 10. Dokes in the white trunks with the red stripe. changing Michael Dokes. He used to hit and run. Now perhaps he's even too immobile. <laughs> Slipping punches beautifully. As we'll be right back with more of the Dokes Chaplin heavyweight fight after this word from our local station. Back at Civic Arena in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, from Baltimore, with his back to us, that is heavyweight George Chaplin. The underdog in this bout against the number two ranked and undefeated Michael Dokes of Akron, Ohio. Both in at 216 and a quarter. Dokes's corner told him that his hands are being held much too low. A little more upper body movement, uh, which they'd like for him to do. At a Thus far for Chaplin, it's been more or less defensive jabs that he throws out. He has not been able to mount too much of an offense against, oh, beautiful right hand. There is a swollen area now under the left eye of Chaplin on the right, and it was a low blow, and referee Frank Cappuccino uh, gave Dokes a warning. They're amply protected with their cups. We've never seen Michael Dokes so serious. Usually there'll be some expression on his face that is totally deadpan. 
What he wants to do is get rid of Chaplin. Don't forget, coming up, it'll be Holmes and Snipes. And after this round, Howard will be telling you more about that. Hold it, hold it, stop punching. Going beyond the halfway point of the fifth round. That was a sneaky left hook. Oh, a body punch dug to the solar plexus. Chaplin taking it, wincing, but right back up and moving. Not quite sure about the style and the ability of Chaplin. Usually he throws a lot more punches. And he's always resented the fact that people thought he couldn't punch, so maybe he's trying to prove it to him. On this 10-rounder preceding the heavyweight championship fight, Holmes and Snipes. Instructions being shouted to my left by trainer Bobby Lewis. Now there was a right hand that got over the left. And more than glanced off the face of Dokes. Chaplin wants to get closer, but he has to be careful not too close. Disadvantage of a 76 inch reach. Inglorious decision accorded to Snipes. Here's Chris, round six. Okay, Howard, we're in the sixth round, and Dokes has uh, not been stunned or shaken up by any of the punches from the boy from Baltimore, the 30-year-old man from Baltimore. Really likable, very bright orthopedic technician for the head of orthopedic surgery at Lutheran Hospital in Baltimore, George Chaplin. Dokes forcing Chaplin against the ropes, a gourmet cook. Loves to design his own clothes. Loves fast cars. And those fast punches are being caught in the arms by Chaplin. Michael uh, getting some of his punches below the belt. Like there. Watch the head. Watch the head. Referee a little concerned that there might be some butting as they really get into close range for the first time. Chaplin being able to take a punch, taking those of Jerry Cooksey in Honolulu prior to his 12-round loss to Greg Page in August. Beautiful whistling right hand. Nothing more than a scoring punch on the part of Chaplin. Let's get back. Only 22 fights for the 30-year-old. He's been boxing only six, and that one caught Dokes, and he's upset. A little careless here in the sixth round. Not fighting his style of fight at all. Being suckered into the style that Chaplin loves. These are pretty much fair exchanges. Oh, stop punching. Great, fellas. Slow pace, round six here in Pittsburgh. Less than a half minute. And the bell in about 10 seconds. Swollen area under Chaplin's left eye. Not a problem at this point, but it could split with any solid punch. Okay, Dokes coming to the left corner, Chaplin off to the right, waiting for his stool, giving us an opportunity to remind you that there's action on ABC tomorrow. Championship between Larry Holmes and the challenger, Ronaldo Snipes. If you just joined us, 
Michael Dokes undefeated, ranked number two. Perhaps classiest of all the heavyweight contenders. He has not shown the class thus far in this bout, I might add. Chaplin is a spoiler-type heavyweight fighting out of Baltimore, unranked, 30 years old. He's won 16 of 22. He has gone 10 rounds four times, 12 rounds three times, whereas Dokes has gone 10 rounds five times. Former football player Michael Dokes, as was George Chaplin, and bringing you the regional rundown here on ABC tomorrow. We have Nebraska playing the Oklahoma Sooners. They'll be playing Oklahoma State instead of the Sooners. That comes later on. Get out there, Sal. Come on, Sal. We figured uh, on paper that these contrasting styles would make for very fast-paced heavyweight bout. Dokes doesn't seem quite as sharp or quite as willing as we've seen him in the past. But as we said, Chaplin is an unorthodox heavyweight who I think is upsetting Dokes with the surprisingly good left jab like there, two in a row. I said the apron is wider on this side than this side. Don't get up. Dokes right from the start feeling that the body punches would uh, eventually get to Chaplin. Oh, he's doing a little of both, especially with the left hand to the head. Oh, great. Digging an occasional left hook to the body. We have 40 seconds left in this, the seventh round. So the speed of uh, punches delivered by Dukes with that right hand. There again, two lefts and then a right. Chaplin taking everything the Dokes is throwing. We've moved into the eighth round now, surprisingly. We felt perhaps this was about that would end uh, a little early. But Michael Dokes having his problems getting off the mark tonight against a spoiler named George Chaplin, Chaplin from Baltimore, in the blue trunks on the far side. Get out yourself. And, of course, we Come look on, forward to the bout following this. On, It'll be the 11th defense of his heavyweight championship by Larry Holmes, 32-year-old champion against Ronaldo Snipes, who just comes off a uh, disputed win over Jerry Cusey in Terrytown, New York, not long ago. Two big men. Bobby Lewis, the Dokes trainer, wants a triple hammer. <laughs> Three in a row. The chaplain blocks many of those punches to the body as he elects to stay against the ropes. Dokes had trouble with his mouthpiece there. It was knocked loose by a right hand thrown by Chaplin. What Chaplin is doing is what he prefers. Staying inside, leaning on his opponent. Difficult to fight. But Dokes is smart enough and experienced enough to get away from it. Surprisingly now, it's a relatively big round for Chaplin. Now it's me. Hold it. Hold it, fellas. Hold it. Dokes has gone completely away from his upright style that usually is very effective with. 
holding now. All right, hold it, hold it. Stop punching. 45 seconds left in the eighth round. There have been no knockdowns. Uh, the only mark is under the left eye of Chaplin, the swollen area. No problem. Jokes in close. Missing often to the head. When he punches to the body, usually the punches are low. There he delivered his best one-two. But not solidly. Stay off, push him off, come on. We're in the ninth round, Civic Arena in Pittsburgh, the bout preceding the heavyweight champion. Title defense by champion Larry Holmes against the challenger, Ronaldo Snipes, coming up. Michael Dokes with his back to us, going against the surprising George Chaplin. Dokes, surprising or not, not giving his best performance. We've seen him fight a lot better. Now he's that upright fighter when he can really throw the combinations and with the one two the left and the right but the last two rounds he's fallen into the strategy that Chaplin loves in close leaning and holding yet Doke's corner tells him to get closer close range five point must session we have Doke's ahead at this point Doke's the white trunks. There it is. He ain't gonna give it to you. You gotta take it. You gotta take it. You gotta take it. Not as sharp as he usually is. Get away from the pole. Stay in the center, fellas. Stay in the center. Come on out of there. Come on out of there. Great. Frank Capacino, the referee. Carol Pullis, the judge on the left. John Stewart on the right. Fans here getting a little restless. But it's a heavyweight championship about coming up following this. Larry Holmes and Ronaldo Snipes. First heavyweight championship fight in, fight in Pittsburgh in 30 years. As a 6-1 to one underdog, Jersey Joe Walker is here. Upset the champion, Ezra Charles. As he went back to their corners between rounds eight and nine, it was Dokes that was leg weary, not Chaplin. fine uppercut as Chaplin now has a nosebleed. Earlier in the second round, Dokes sustained one. The Bill Prezon, his corner did a good job stopping the flow of blood. Bill Dokes, but he ha has his hands full tonight with the 30-year-old from Baltimore who's only been fighting for six years, George Chaplin. Chaplin is not in awe of what usually is the speedy punching of Dokes. Dokes just does not have the zip that he normally has in moving around the ring and throwing of combinations. But what he's fighting tonight in the 30-year-old from Baltimore, Chaplin is a well-conditioned athlete. Mac Lewis and Buster Hatcher and Eddie Aliano shouting from the corner of Chaplin. This is the final round.
distance in this huge civic arena. The fans do not see it as you see it on your television here on ABC. What a magnificent view of the action up close where the seats are far away and they don't realize that both are working very, very hard. Spending a lot of energy, but the styles tonight not making for the most exciting heavyweight fight in the world. Doak's just having trouble pulling the trigger on his, well, both hands. He often is very flat-footed with the hands doing nothing. Now he's beginning to pick up the pace as we're down to the final 40 seconds of this heavyweight fight. too late now. It's only 20 seconds to go in the fight. There have been no knockdowns. A swollen area under the left eye of Chaplin. Nosebleed, both fighters. That's been the damage sustained by the heavyweight. And it went the distance as we'll be returning to Civic Arena with the decision of this fight. And then the heavyweight championship after a word from our local stations. Please, Judge Carol Paulus scores at 49 points for Doak, 44 for Chaplin. <laughs> Judge Sean Stern scores at 47 for Doak, 43 Chaplin. Referee Frank Cappuccino scores for Dokes a unanimous decision. In front of us, Larry is trained by Eddie Futch, a crack trainer in preparing a man physically. Larry hasn't shirked in his training for this fight, not one bit. He is taking it as seriously as any other against presumably more notable opponents. Plus, he came in at 213 and a quarter. Now in ring center. He dances about, preparing himself for the advent of the match. Welcome to the Civic Arena and tonight's World Heavyweight Championship card promoted by Don King and the Civic Arena. This event is sanctioned by the Pennsylvania State Athletic Commission, James J. Binns, Chairman, Regis at Chatula Commissioner, and the World Boxing Council Duke Durden Representative. The officials for this evening's event are the doctors in attendance, Dr. John Santoro, Dr. Philip Schumacher. The judges are Spider Bynum, Tony Castellano, and Eddie Wood. The timekeeper, Jimmy Bruce.